Hello, this is Professor George F. Rice, and in this video we will discuss working with class diagrams in Umbrello. Here's a sample class that is already drawn in Umbrello. A class in UML is represented by a rectangle containing three different panes. The top pane contains the name of the class, in this case, Polygon. The middle pane contains the attributes or the class level variables. In this case we have two, perimeter of type double, which you see following the colon, and with an initial value of 0.0, .0 and sides, an integer with an initial value of 0. The bottom pane contains the list of methods, those function-like things that allow you to manipulate the data inside the class. In this case we have three, add side, which has a parameter of length of type double, get parameter, which has no parameter and returns a double, and get num sides, which has no parameters and returns an int. You'll also notice that we have a symbol to the left of each of these elements, a minus, which means it is a private element. In this case, these can only be seen inside of the class, and then a plus, which means it is a public element, which can be seen from outside of the class. Later, we'll also see a third visibility, the pound sign, which is protected visibility. We'll discuss what that means at a later time. So let's shrink this class down, say 100%, and we'll add a new class to the left, which will contain our test for the polygon. We click on the uh, new class symbol, here the icon on the toolbar. It brings up a dialog asking us the name of our new class. In this case, we will call it Test Polygon. Having done that, we now have our class on the display. You'll notice that my cursor indicates we're ready to add a new class. That's the default in Umbrello. To get out of creating new classes, we'll come over and select this arrow, the selection arrow on the left. Now, having created our class, we can now put in our variables. We'll start by adding a past variable, a boolean, to test polygon. This will be true as long as all of the tests pass. If any test fails, it will be set to false. We can right-click on the class, select New, Attribute, and we get this dialog which allows us to name the attribute, Past. That attribute is of type bool. We can give it an initial value, which in our case will be true. We're very optimistic here. You have the option of typing documentation in. This would be included in code generated from your model. Otherwise, you come to this dialog to see it again. We won't add any documentation at this point. I know you're shocked. And that gives us our very first parameter, our first attribute, which is passed. The second parameter that we'll need is an instance of the Polygon class for us to test. Now we could right-click new attribute again. Let's use a different method. We'll double-click that class and we'll get the properties dialog for the entire class. You'll see a series of categories listed over here on the left. Attributes, as you may suspect, is the attributes that we have created already. I could click here on the attribute past, select properties, and I could then change the values of this property uh, this attribute that I have created already. But instead we'll click New Attribute and we will declare a new attribute of type Polygon and it will be of type Polygon, the class that we have defined. Because we have defined that class in Umbrello, it is listed as a type available for us to select. So I can click OK and we now have Polygon added. You'll notice that Umbrello has already added a relationship for us because we referenced Polygon as part of the attribute list for Test Polygon. That is, in UML terms, an aggregation relationship from Polygon to Test Polygon. All of this is handled automatically by Umbrello. Next, we'll need to add our methods, or as Umbrello calls them, operations. In classic testing, each test that we want to run would be a separate method on our test class. So what we will do is click on New Operation. Uh, the first test will be our nominal case, the, the normal working case, and so we will call that test in sides. It will return a boolean, either true or false. 
to indicate whether that has been correct or not. The question then is how many sides will we test on a particular call to this method? So we'll add a parameter. The parameter will be sides. It will be of type integer. Now the initial value in this case is really the default value. We'll say 4. We'll use a square as just a, a default value. Um, Umbrella also offers you in, in, out, or out. Don't worry about those right now. Also stereotype name. We'll talk about stereotypes later in the class. So we select OK. That adds one parameter here. We could of course add as many parameters as we want to. Have a public visibility for this method test inside that returns a bool. All looks good. Click OK. Click OK. And now we have our method listed here. Now we also may want to have some tests for our non-normal positions. For example, um, what happens if we have a polygon of zero sides? We have added no sides to the polygon. So we will test zero sides. Of type bool. Don't need any parameters for this. Um, we can also test if we have um, non-negative or non-positive lengths of sides. So we can test non-positive sides, turning a bool. Okay, that gives us three different test cases. Now if we want to do a stress test, we could have a special test for that, um, or we could just pass a value here like a million sides, see what happens, what could possibly go wrong in that situation. Okay, let's line these up because I like things neat. Go to diagram, align top. Looks much nicer. Now let's save our diagram since we've done enough work that we would not want to lose it. Go to wherever your homework folder is and type the name that you want to use for your UML diagrams. We'll call this polygon. Unlike most tools, it does not add the extension automatically. And it's particularly if you're in Windows, that will confuse Windows. So add the .xmi here at the top. .xmi stands for XML Metadata Interchange. That is a standard format for UML diagrams. Now the last thing that we need is a main to get this party started. Now in C++, that's a main function. Function is not a concept of object-oriented programming, and so it's not directly supported by the UML. What we can do is borrow a page from Java, and we can create a class named main. Or we could name it main rather than main, is an English pun. And inside that class, we can have a main operation, a main method, and that will represent our main function. It, of course, returns an int. We don't have to put the parameters. They're kind of complicated. And the other thing that we'll want in our main function will be an instance of test polygon. So again, we can go to attributes, create a new app attribute, test polygon. You'll notice that we normally use the lowercase version of our class name as the variable name unless you have a better idea. Make it of type test polygon. Well, let's zoom out a little bit like that. Make room for our labeling. Line everything up nice. And there we go. There's our class diagram. We can save it and life is good. So you'll want to turn in the .xmi file with your other homework so the graders can grade your diagrams. You may also want to turn in screenshots in case they have any trouble with the .xmi file. You could use the screenshot tool as we demonstrated for you in class and, and some of the other documentation. There is a somewhat faster way with Umbrello. You can click File, Export Diagrams as Pictures. In the next dialog, select all diagrams. That way, if you have UML um, sequence diagrams or use case diagrams or activity diagrams, the other diagram types that we will cover, they will all get exported into separate files. Select OK. Pick the directory that you want those to go to. We'll go with Documents, like so, and then click OK. What you will then see 
is an image here which when opened is your class diagram as a nice tightly packed PNG image. So that should get you a pretty good introduction into how to create your UML class diagrams using Umbrello. You'll notice that you have a lot of other relationships here between classes, some of which Umbrello will draw for you as you define your data, and in some cases you'll have to draw them yourself. If you want to know how to model an enum in C++, there is in fact an enum here. We'll call it light just as a test. And that enum then allows you to specify um, the various literals that you want to use here. Green, yellow, red, and as before you can move those up and down using the arrows on the side. They show up in UML looking like this. There's also an interface showing up right here. The difference between an interface and a class is that an interface has no attributes. It is only used to specify the operations that will be required for another mm, class to implement. comes out looking something like that. Now you also have a box that you can use to bound your system. So we'll drop a box there. It doesn't draw exactly like you would expect. You have to drop it. Then you can put it in like so. You can also take a label such as this. And that just basically becomes floating text that you can let float around the system. If you want it to, you can change font, make it look however you want, and there you go. UML also has an official label um, element, which is also available here. It comes out with a nice yellow background, looks like something in the UML. like so. You'll notice also over here on the left you have this tree. You can see that the things that we have created show up over here. Um, here's our polygon, our test polygon classes. In another class diagram I could simply drag these out and drop them in order to put them onto that diagram. How would I create a new class diagram, you might ask. You actually can go to the logical view, which is where our class diagram currently is. Right click new and here's our class diagram, sequence diagram, activity diagram, state diagram that we'll do somewhat later. Um, if you're looking for the use case diagram there's a use case view and we can create a new use case diagram as well as our actors and such inside of that. Should be enough to get you going. Experiment. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Learning is good for the heart, good for the soul, makes your brain all happy and wrinkly. So enjoy.